This is Twit. So we've been tracking, and we've done this a, you know, a few times in our stories of the week of the past, uh, the potential of AI-generated art. And I saw a story on Vice that I was like, uh-oh, this, this seems like this is maybe a milestone or a sign of things to come. Here we go. Vice has a story by Matthew Galt that focuses on a particular uh, Colorado State Fair uh, Vice probably doesn't have a whole lot to you know, write about, a lot of opportunities to write about the Colorado State Fair, but in particular this time, the State Fair held a fine art competition. And I'm pretty certain you know exactly where this is going. Jason Allen, who is the president of Incarnate Games, it's a company based in Colorado, submitted three art pieces to the fine art competition. In particular, it was the digital art category. All of those uh, those submissions printed on their own canvas. So you know the uh, the requirements it had to be digital art. Printed out three of uh, three different uh, digital art pieces onto canvas. One of the three, a piece entitled "Theatre de Opera Spatiale," I'm assuming something like that. There's lots of uh, like uh, emphasis uh, placed throughout that, so I'm sure I got that wrong. But uh, ended up with a first place win in the competition. So good for you, Jason. From the Vice article that describes the piece, so, you, so you audio listeners can get a sense of what what it shows, and we're kind of showing it right now on the on the video stream. Uh, it depicts a strange scene. This is uh, the words of the Vice article that looks like it could be from a space opera and it looks like a masterfully done painting classical figures in a baroque hall stare through a, cir a circular viewport into a sun drenched and radiant landscape and as you can probably guess jason did not paint this picture the picture along with the other two uh, works that he submitted were generated by an artificial intelligence engine specifically one that i hadn't heard of actually called mid journey and uh, Jason posted on Discord about his preparation so you kind of get a sense of, of what his involvement with this was. He said he created hundreds of images with a, quote, special prompt. So the prompt is, of course, you know, the collection of words that, does, that you use in these AI image uh, generators to describe what you're looking for. And the more we work with these things, the more we realize that the prompts are really important and they kind of have... To a certain degree, they kind of have, I don't want to say art, but there's a certain kind of syntax that each system seems to carry with it. Yeah. The more you That's work with word. it, the more you understand, uh, how, you know, what collection of words are really informative to these systems, that sort of thing. I'm not very good at it, by the way, but <laughs> apparently Jason was. He said, after many weeks of fine tuning and curating my gens, his generations, I chose my top three, had them printed on canvas after upscaling with gigapixel AI. So, uh, he shared uh, this. He labeled it. Uh, the submission was labeled Jason Allen via Midjourney. So anyone who actually knew that Midjourney was an AI generation uh, system might see that and understand. But I have a feeling a lot of people would see that and like not know what that even means, right? Just Jason right. Allen via Midjourney. It's kind of you know could be anything. Uh, he also shared. I generate images with uh, MJ, Midjourney. I do passes with Photoshop. So he takes that into Photoshop. Oh, and then he also oh. upscales with Gigapixel. So there is a little bit of a human touch on components of the equation. But I think the image in and of itself largely was generated specifically from that AI. So, um, you know, and this kind of goes, the discussion can go in a couple of different ways around this. Uh, part of it lies in the categorization of such imagery. You know, if there is a competition at a fair or wherever it is and it's just digital arts, this is a digital art. So it's not like it doesn't qualify unless there was a disclaimer in there to say, hey, oh, by the way, this has to be digital art that's created top to bottom by a human or whatever. You know what I mean? There, there would need to uh -huh. be that in there for it to be uh, legitimized, I guess. Or kick or to kick it out, and I imagine that at some point things like this are going to get that uh, get that message. They're going to be like, well, "Wait a minute, we need to put this in there so that real human competitors don't feel completely sideswiped." Because a lot of people were upset about this, and rightfully so. I mean, 
I imagine if I was a digital artist and, you know, I poured in hundreds of hours into an image or I don't know how long it takes to, to make one of these things, but, uh, and then someone comes along and wins first place. And then we find out that it, it was actually created by an AI that literally takes minutes or seconds. Uh, I'd be upset about that. What about you, Micah? Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> this is always going to be, um, in, interesting topic of discussion based on who you talk to like it it, it yeah. depends yeah, on yeah per, absolutely it depends on perspective and i there are so many different points of view when it comes to this and i feel for those points of view for everyone uh i think mm -hmm. i talked in the past about how democratizing um like online publishing the way that ai could help that uh, where I yeah. remember the exorbitant cost of AP and Getty images and how, you know, folks who want to uh, write on Medium or write their own blog and just, you know, want to generate an image for that, uh, who don't have the time to learn how to use uh, the tool to sort of create it from the ground up. Because it's like if you give a if you give a moose a muffin or if you give a mouse a cookie, I think it's the ones. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard oh, of those yeah. books, but yes, oh yes, I I remember those well. Yeah, yeah. So it, here it, in the before times, I want to start a blog, and so I go and like I've got the writing ability, but now that I want to start a blog. I go online and I don't like any of the solutions. So I realize I need to build my own blog. So then I go and learn HTML and CSS. And then I realize I need some JavaScript involved too, so that I'm doing that. Then finally, I get my blog all written and it's ready to go. But now I need photos. So now I'm taking photography classes and I'm going out and learning uh, photography. I realize that I need to upgrade my camera. So I have to buy a new camera. But which camera do I buy? So I have to learn about the different... It can go on and on and on and on. And yes, of course, the argument can be made that you just don't do all of that and you just stick with the basics. But I like to think that AI can be included as part of the basics. AI generated art can be included as part of the basics yeah. where someone can use it for, for that. Or for artists who, who I've heard artists who say we can use this as a jumping off point when my yeah. brain can't wrap itself around this idea that I'm supposed this prompt that I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, to have some jumping off point there would be really handy. So, yeah, I, I am, I am not happy about the potential for disruption that it has on a market of creators who already struggle to be paid what they're worth. Um, but I am excited about it from all of those other things that I just talked about and uh, the potential for creativity that can take place. So, yeah, it's it's got a lot of uh, facets. <laughs> Yeah. And I think this story really kind of illustrates, you know, kind of another part. I, I mentioned a couple of different ways the discussion, you know, goes from something like this. This illustrates another aspect that we've talked about in the past, which is just the sheer fact, I think, that these images that are being created by AI are continuing to improve to the point to where they're so good that unless you knew going in that it was created by AI, you 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 know, you wouldn't know any different. And, uh, you right. know, it's printed on a canvas up on a wall. Someone looks at it and says, wow, that's really creative. I can't believe you, you know, it's that someone would, would come up with this idea. That's amazing here. First place. And, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of doing some searching around and searching some Twitter feeds kind of associated with this. And some people, and I saw one comment where someone was like, yeah, but you know what a, a, a robot or an AI will never have, it will never have, you know, the emotion that's behind creating the image and, you know, that kind of like human, human direction that's, that's behind it, that drives, you know, the, the, the meaning and the blah, blah, blah. And I'm just, I was reading that. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I get where you're coming from, but it kind of doesn't matter because when you're talking about art, it's, it's really less about the, who creates it and how they felt and blah, blah, blah. It's really about, I mean, that is a, that is a piece of it. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean to like, you know, say that that's not important, but I think for the majority of other people, it's really about how they end up feeling about it. When I look at a piece of art how does it make me feel and whether that's created by a robot that had some grand vision for a statement that it wanted to make or a human same thing it kind of doesn't matter it's like as a human if i look on the wall and i see that canvas and i go man that's beautiful art it's beautiful art it doesn't matter what created it so it is Agreed. what it is yeah yeah i that, that's that's what it boils down to for me especially is like 
if it's if if I like it, then I don't care if it was made by a machine yeah. or not. It's, it's totally, deep. totally. So there was one person on Twitter, Omnimorpho, who said, we're watching the death of artistry unfold right before our eyes. Uh, and I don't know that I believe that because I think, I think there will always be room for good art, whether it's created by a robot or AI or it's created by a human. You know what I mean? Uh, good art mm -hmm. is good art or, or compelling art or art that is beautiful or whatever, you name it. There will always be people who are very talented and can create that stuff. And I guess I guess the other side of that is if these systems become so prevalent that it's just as easy to plug in a thing, you know, a, a command or whatever, a, you know, a, a collection of words to come up with something that's close enough uh, as it is to pay someone or, you know, hire someone to do it. I guess that poses a problem. But I think at the end of the day, good art is good art and it will always have value uh, no matter who it comes from. So there we go. I thought that was kind of interesting. A little bellwether for th things to come, I think. Yeah, where absolutely. We're at.